guys, before I start this tutorial, I wanted to talk about um, some examples that I have on the handout. Okay, so you guys are going to be making a Rorschach ink blot um, with Photoshop. Um, and the, before I should I should mention that Rorschach was an actual doctor, um, and he came up with these ink blot tests. Um, and the test was supposed to record the subject's perception of an ink blot. So he just took ink. Um, he would just you know drop it onto a piece of paper, fold it in half. He'd open it up, um, and then. Um, th this test ended up going out to other psycho psychiatrists and um, they would show their clients these uh, ink blots and then they would gather notes um, based on the person's reaction to and their perception of what they saw in the ink blot. So it was supposed to help kind of get them to talk about um, their feelings and and um, get them to to um, put it out there so they can record this information about them. Um, we'll also see Rorschach. If you've ever seen um, Watchmen, you might be, or you're familiar with the comic, um, the character of Rorschach, um, and they actually made, it's a really cool movie, you should watch it, and his face continues to change into different um, ink blots because um, uh, of that idea of perception that it changes based on the person. Um, and then we can see some of the traditional ink blots. Um, but you'll see all these ink blots online, people doing digital versions of the ink blot, um, and that's what all of these are. So I gave, gave you three examples on the handout. The first one I call a representational image, and that means that I can look at this ink blot and there are things here that I can label. Um, flower, tree, hand, um, I can actually pick something out and say that this is a flower, okay? Um, it's representing something from real life, okay? If I come over here, and this one's labeled abstract, abstract means that there's nothing representational about this. I can't look at this and say, this is a dog, this is a bat, this is an eye. There's nothing here from the real world. So that means that it's been so abstract, it's pure abstraction, that it does not represent anything from the real world. Now, you and me could look at this abstract ink blot and say, well, I see darkness and I see this horse and I see, um, you know, somebody screaming with their hand up. And, you know, you could say that you see that, but that's really not there. That's your perception of something that's abstract. Um, so when you're making your ink blot, you have to ask yourself, am I making an abstract? Um, ink blot that's non-representational, doesn't represent anything in the real, real world, or am I purposely going to pick things that um, people will be able to um, uh, identify with, and uh, maybe there's a theme, okay? So this one has a subject theme um, that is just like nature, I would say. There's a lot of like tree branches, and there's flowers, um, and then there's like the human hand, and we only see that human hand here, but the rest is like this floral. So I would say that this has a subject theme of this floral um, idea. Now here we have more of a conceptual. Now we have some abstract marks here that these are non-representational, but if we look really closely, we'll see that um, they created um, this hand that's grabbing another hand, so it looks abusive. Um, we can see that there is supposed to be this face um, that looks um, like they're playing around with this idea of fear. Again, we have a fist that looks like it's um, actually, you know, has some power to it. We can actually see the outline of a man. Um, and so, and we can also even see like faces in here. So they purposely um, made this representational. Um, they use some, a, a combination of abstract marks as well as representational um, brushes because they wanted to have a conceptual theme behind it, which is abuse, which is power. Um, so it, your ink plot could be very powerful in terms of concept, um, what your idea is for it. Again, it could be abstract and you really want people um, just to have their own idea about what they see, like the original um, ink blot test, or maybe you want to have more of a, th a fun theme. So it's really up to you. Um, I would just think about that for a second before you actually execute this project. Um, what do you want to convey with your artwork? You get to start making those decisions before you even get started. All right, so now we're going to create um, our Photoshop uh, ink blot. So I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm going to say File New. 
and I'm going to make an eight and a half by 11 document that is portrait orientation. I wanna make sure that the resolution is 300 and I'm gonna print this, so I wanna make sure that it's CMYK, uh, the four toners that are gonna be used in our printer to actually make something. The background's gonna be white and I'm gonna hit create. All right, now I'm going to go to my paintbrush and make sure we're on the brush tool. And if I go up here to my properties panel, um, we'll see that I can change the size of it and I can change the hardness of it. Um, I'm gonna go to the gear in the upper right hand um, corner of this panel and I'm gonna say, um, get more brushes. So I'm gonna select that and, oh, so this is actually bringing me to places where I can um, download uh, a bunch of uh, different um, brushes, but I actually have a ton on the server. So let's go back. Uh, I'm going to go to um, import brushes. So sorry, that's what I wanted to go to, but you can get more online. Now they've kind of changed that. So I'm going to import brushes and I'm going to go to the server and I'm going to go to digital server. I'm going to go to stock. I'm going to go down to Photoshop resources and then you're gonna have a whole folder of Photoshop brushes and I have tons in here so these are all free brushes that I've collected over the years um, some of them are named you know like birds and um, gives you kind of a preview of what birds would look like um, and you can see a dot ABR file and that means that these are different kinds of brushes um, so I know I want to do more of, ooh, and I love the bugs one too. Um, there's everything. There's like floral, there's zombies, there's horror, there's all kind of terror cards. There is everything you could imagine. Um, there's some abstract ones too. Um, I know that I want to do more of an, um, uh, an outdoors kind of theme. So I'm going to actually start with insects and I'm going to select the .abr file and say open and then if I scroll all the way down, we're going to see 500 ml insects, milliliter insects. I'm not sure what that stands for. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to see all of these brushes. Okay, so I'm going to select one and there is my insect. Okay, I can rotate this uh, brush by doing this. Um, you can change the size over here of the brush, so smaller or bigger. But also remember that with on your keyboard, if you pick the right curly bracket, it's going to make your brush bigger. Oh, don't be in there though. <laughs> Let's try this again. Um, if I pick the right curly brush uh, bracket, notice it's making my um, brush bigger. And if I pick the left, it's going to make it smaller. And before I get started, I have to be pay attention to the color. Um, so for this one, I'm going to keep it black. I'm going to keep it original. So I'm going to double click my paint well and I'm going to change it to black and say okay and then I'm going to click just once and there's my insect um, and then I can pick another one that's a butterfly I'm actually going to rotate it so it's this way so kind of like actually eh, maybe this way mm, I don't know what I want. Mm. So I can rotate it the way that I want it to be yeah we'll do it that way and I want this one to be bigger now when I'm executing this project, I have to think about um, the middle of the project. So the, the right side represents the midpoint of this, and I like to leave a lot of negative space here um, and then add all of my brushes here. Um, so I'm going to continue with this. Um, I'm going to pick different brushes, and by all means, I can go back to the little gear and I could say import brushes. Maybe I want to... Um, bring in some floral aspects too. Oh, there's another one called bugs. So many, I love bugs so much. Um, and if I go down, we can see that that folder is loaded now at the very bottom. And I'm gonna pick that one. Ooh, and I'm gonna rotate this one. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So this is gonna take some time. Um, now, while I'm working, um, I could erase anything if I don't like it. Um, that's why you want it to, to, to work like this. So I'm going to double click and say, okay, I want to un unlock this. And I can go back with my eraser tool and um, have it set on a, a crack. And I can um, erase any of this if I want to. Um, so I'm going to erase all of it. And then 
You can actually work in layers too if maybe you don't want to erase like that. Um, and then I'm going to fill it back in with white. Oh, jeez. There you go. Um, I'm just going to paint with white. There we go. Okay, so the whole thing's white again. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to start executing this again. Um, and maybe I want to do something different. Maybe, you know, while I'm working, you decide I, don't, I want to do something else. It's totally fine. I'm going to go back to import brushes. Um, and maybe I want to do a different theme this time. Um, children. I don't know. Look at what this looks like. Um, so it's just about arranging and thinking about what your focal point's going to be. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And... Play around here. Mm -hmm. Kind of lost that there, so maybe I'll bring some other things back. So I'm going to do a really bad job. Um, I'm just going to throw something together. And when you're getting there, this should be the overall shape that you have. This is you're going to consider this your middle point, and then you ha should have about this much negative space. So I want you to be really thoughtful about where you're putting things, um, etc. Um, but I just kind of threw this together really quickly. So now you're ready to make your full size version um, of this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to Image and Canvas Size, and right now the width of it is eight and a half. Um, and the height is 11. I'm going to keep the height at 11, but I'm going to change the width to 17 and hit OK. And now we see that um, it doubled the width of this. Um, so I have my rulers on. Command R brings your rulers back on and off. And if I actually click, hold, and drag, I can bring a guide that this won't print. It's just a, a line indicating where the center is. I can then move my layer over to the right. And what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer, Command J to duplicate. So there it is again. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and then I'm going to flip horizontal. And that's going to flip this right here. Um, so now with my, um, my back layer, I can either transform this so all the whites back here, or you could just fill it with your paintbrush um, or your, your bucket. Um, so now we have um, our final piece in the S apply. I want to apply this. So now we can see that um, whatever was on that right side is now the mid midpoint, and we've reflected this to create a symmetrical design. Um, and it uh, instantly has this really interesting balance because of the duplication and the, the reflection. So I'm going to file save as, and I'm going to call this my first and last name underscore ink blot, and then the date. And I'm going to save a Photoshop version .psd. Just leave that here and say Photoshop, say save, okay. And then I'm also going to say file save as, and I'm going to do the same here. But where it says format, I'm actually going to save it as a JPEG, and it should now say .jpg. This is the one you're going to actually upload to um, Google Classroom, and that's it. That's your Warshak Inkblot. Feel free to look through the 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 brushes. That's what's going to take a long time. Um, feel free to erase and try some different compositions. Um, be really thoughtful about um, that idea of, do I want to make a representational theme? Um, do I want to make it abstract? Um, what do I want people to feel and think about looking at my artwork? You have a lot of power here, and it's a pretty fun and easy project to do that. Okay.